There's a lot going on this Saturday and the case. We've got seven games for you on the menu. Let's get right to it. My name is Andrea Sachinka and you're watching Daily KHL Update. We travel to Vladivostok first where Admiral meets the rivals Kunlun Red Star. This is the last game for the Dragons on this eight-game road trip. We go to Petisa Farina for the action. First here, Dennis Asipa Forista from the neutral zone and it almost pulls Yuka Okinawa. Fuck rings off the pipe and stays in play. Lucky bounce for Admiral. Moving on to the second, Vladimir Batuzov gives the puck to Martin Bakrosh who jumps to the slot and scores on his former team. That's his second of the year. Third period now, Leglamakao drives into the zone down the left wing, fires it from the circle and it goes upstairs. Nifty shot by Lamako and that's his first goal on the K. That gives the Sailors a 2-0 lead. The Dragons answer five minutes later on the left penalty call. Ethan Warwick passes it to Dennis Osipov, gets it back and shoots from the circle to beat Alkinora on the short side. But that's all they can get on this one. Admiral holds on to the narrow lead and take it 2-1 on home ice. We're off to Siberia now, it's where Sibir play hosts an empty gimmick this afternoon. They get busy in the first, home side gets on the board midway through it. Alexander Torchinuk finds the rebound in front of the net and puts it in for his first of the season. Five minutes later, Alexander Sharov picks up the puck in his defensive end, gains speed, skates up the ice with it and snipes it past Konstantin Barola and what a shot! The Wolves get one back short left of that as the up bike and slams it into the back of the net from the high slot. It's a power play goal. But Sibir restored that two-goal margin with just a few seconds remaining to play in the period. They convert on a man advantage as well. The puck bounces to Mikhail Rocham and he scores on the Yonin net. That's his fourth of the year. Nefti Kimik make it a one-goal game again early in the second. Alexei Volgin scores his first goal in over three years. It's been a while. He beat Harry Saturday on the glove side with a nice wrister. Sibir get the next goal later in the period. Ilya Morozov chucks it to the slot from the corner and it goes in of Alexander Brintsev. No scoring after that. Nefti Kimik was their third in a row as Sibir take it 4-2 on home ice. We go to Yekaterinburg now, where Optum Belis fights Daniel Moscow, who are riding a three-game losing streak. It's Vadim Shipachov against Nigel Daz as we head to Uralets. Three minutes into the opening period, Artem Volkov shoots from the blue line and goes wide. Vladislav Yufremov tries to score on the rebound, but Jakub Kovarov gives him nothing on the short side. Great save by the Czech half fighter. But Dynamo get one past him just a few moments later. Volkov makes a beautiful diagonal pass down low, and Slava Kolomen scores his fifth. His personal best in the league is six. Home team strikes back just nine seconds shy of the halfway mark of the period. Anatoly Goloshev nets his first in his first game of the season. No better way to return to action. Midway for the second now, Dmitry Yashkin wins a face off in the offensive zone. Shipachev sets up Andre Miran up at the point and he lets go a ripper. He goes straight in. Two on Dynamo. Early in the third period, the blue and white take another draw and further improves their lead with another blast. This time it's Kirill Lyman who hammers it home. They solidify their lead just over a minute later as after the list give up the puck at the far blue line, tic-tac-toe and Vladimir Brooklyn celebrates his first of the season. Igor Polagallop and Nick Sindishes with assists. Nigel Doss tries to turn things around as he fights Igor Zaitsev up to the head but it leads to nothing. There's another bout a few minutes later as Ivan Moranov drops them with Galashev, but it won't hold up on the list either. Dynamo snapped their three-game skid and take it 4-1 on the road. This is Magnitogorsk is the side of battle between Metalurg and Torpedal. On team struggles early in the season but won their last game while the Vistas lost two in a row. Two-time Gagarin Cup champs open score in three and a half minutes in. Dennis Martian slides it to the area in front of the net and Captain Sergei Mazakin catches in. That's point number 700 for him in KHL regular seasons. Torpedo almost got back even in a hurry, but Stanislav Golimov makes two saves in a row. First stop in Sergei Gonchuruk and then Polshev were on the follow-up chance. They get one past him late in the period. 
Jordan Schrader gives it to Damir Jafar, who takes a quick shot and scores his seventh of the year. This one comes in a power play. Meter through the second, now Tarpeta with the odd man. Raj Rada throws it across the ice to Jafar, one timer, and it rings off the pipe. But they still get in the lead shirt after that. Slanislav Bacharov shoots up the right wing, and Quinton Howden buries the rebound. Magnitka respawns meter through the third. Ramal Lovima finds wide open Yegor Yakolov in the circle, and Yakolov scores the equalizer. He now has points in four consecutive games. Eight goes to the shootout, and Torpedo still prevail. Mikhail Varnikov scores the winner. Battle of Salvage a point, but still losing home ice. 3 2 shootout is the final. We're off to Moscow now, where would Army look to bounce back from a tough loss to Vitas as they face Dynamo Riga, who have been in a slump for a while. The two trade goals in the opening period. Linden Bay smashes it home from the right circle, off assist by Irzy Sakaj. Riga got back even late in the frame. Roberts Mamchitz shoots from the blue line and it goes in of Vince Meyer. Mamchitz registers his first career THL point and it's a 1 1 tie 20. But then Riga fall apart in the second. Red Army skate to the net with four players against just two and base scores his second of the night from the doorstep. Dynamo keep piling up penalties and he did a nasty of wires at home on a two man advantage to make it 3 1. Three minutes later, Kiro Kaprizov steals the puck behind the net and stuffs it in on the wraparound. That's his tenth of the year and he still leads the league in that department. Shot after that, Maxim Mamin is slashed on a breakaway and he's given a penalty shot. Can he convert? Nope, Andre Makarov with the poke tag. No matter, Red Army make it 5-1 before the period expires. Ivan Telegin redirects Alexander Romano's shot from the high slot. Telegin has his second of the year, while Kaprizov gets a secondary assist on the play. Third period now, Alexei Marchenko delivers a gorgeous hip check on Robert Slipsberg, and that leads to a scrum. A couple of offset and minus is the verdict. Riga get a power play shortly after that, and full Makarov for the extra attacker. Bold move, doesn't pay off. Marchenko scores a rare short head and goal on the empty net and goaltender Lars Lukensen gets the only assist. Riga ends their three-game drought but still lose their seventh in a row. 6-1 Red Army is the final. We're making short stop in St. Petersburg now where SPA go up against Tractor. There's not a lot of scoring in this one and it all takes place in the open period of play. First, Maxim Karpov nets it against his former team of assists by Vladimir Kachov and Daniel Galonyuk, who does now register his first career KHL point. Tractor answer just 50 seconds later. Stamash Gika scores his second of the year, and his countryman Lukas Sedla gets the only helper. And just a few minutes later, Andrew Caleb gets the game winning goal, while Alexei Kurchinin and Sergei Tereshenko draw the assists. Tractor beat ski on the road for the first time since 2011. 2-1 is the final. And just one more score to tell you about. Sparta kind of beat his 10-game winning streak. Slava Lyshenko opens scoring in the second. Igor Varankov forced overtime and late in regulation, but it solved nothing and Spartak went on to win in the shootout. Kaspers Dalgavich with the winner. And that's it for the LKHL update, but do come back tomorrow for four more games, including Boris Severstal and Lokomotiv vs. Avangard. My name is Andreas Sachinka. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.